Hey everyone, it's Natasha. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you the Life of Fred Language Arts High School series. It is a four book set. Australia Begin Teaching Classics Classes Dreams A, B, C, D. All right, so let's jump right in. So first we have Australia. And let's see here. All right, a note before we begin. This is the first language arts book in the Life of Fred series, and these language arts books we will cover English from every angle. The first book will cover a zillion topics, including the right way to hold a pencil, postscripts and letters, eight ways to make plurals in English, the 14 punctuation marks, silent letters, homonyms, hyperbole, when to use that and when to use which. This is only a partial list. For maximum happiness, let's not begin this book too early. There are other things that need to be done before studying heteronyms. All right, so a lot of people do say that they do use these before high school but he's very adamant that these are high school books. Okay, how this book is organized. Each chapter is a daily lesson consisting of about four pages of The Adventures of Fred and a Your Turn to Play. Have a paper and pencil handy before you sit down to read. Each Your Turn to Play consists of about three or four questions. Write out the answers, don't just orally answer them. After all the questions are answered, then take a peek at my answers that are given on the next page. Don't just read the questions and look at my answers. You won't learn as much that way. A note from Stan. The government schools and most textbooks practice a form of segregation. In the English class, they teach only English. In the math class, they study only math. In history, only history. In geography, only geography. I believe there is an inner coherence among all the subjects. I do not teach English, I teach kids. In some of the Life of Fred math books, there is piano sheet music. In this book, I include the geography of the oceans, the capital of Kansas. There are four ways to try to figure out what a continent is and what to do if you are lost in an airport. I believe in play and having fun. Most textbooks are boring and dry. Who picks up a textbook to read in their leisure time? I have tried to write the, and I don't know what this says. If it says wettest book I can, that would make the most sense to me because it's dripping. I don't know. All right, so then we get into... The content. So chapter one, the world, chapter two, questions, three, letter writing, four, snack time, five, the call. And then it'll just continue on here. I'm not going to read out all of these, but you can always pause the video if you want to see these more deeply and up to chapter 19. In the Life of Fred um, Elementary Series math books, there are 19 chapters, so this follows that same format. So um, there's a familiar character, Carrie, from the Elementary Math Series. So we've got, a lot of times he does these timeouts where he teaches some important life lesson, um, tries to make sense of things, and then the your turn to play. So this follows the exact same format as the math books if you're familiar with those. And the students should, like he said, write these out on a piece of paper, the answers, before they look over here to the answers. And sometimes there's a little more information down below the answers. Chapter two, we'll follow the same format, your turn to play and the answers. Okay, so just going to flip through that. Okay, I'm going to go to this index here in case you want to see some of these things that are taught in this book, such as alliteration, baby teeth, homophones, indentation, paragraphs, parallel lines, plurals, pull reversal, Madagascar, rectangle, rhombus, sphere, square, stitch, subjunctive mood, time zones, topology, trapezoid, travel agent, verbs, vowel, when to ask questions, where to put a stamp on an envelope. So like he says, this covers a myriad of things. Then we get into begin teaching. Okay. All right, and then by the end of this book, you will be able to answer what is the perfect progressive form of the verb to sing? What are the five ways to pronounce the letter A? What are the meanings of the verbs affect and effect? What are the meanings of the nouns affect and effect? What are the 16 ways to create plurals in English? What does it mean to read Moby Dick at a deeper level than just as a fishing story? What is the rule for verbs in which the compound subjects are connected by or? The hats or the coat is slash are mine. How can you define a consonant in terms of airflow instead of just saying that it isn't a vowel? And why is it silly to put antiseptic on the iambic foot? And many more topics in language arts. And more. There's an essential body of knowledge that every well-educated person should have. English is important, math is important, but so are many other areas of learning. There is no reason why each subject should be kept in watertight compartments. They flow naturally together. In this book, you will learn why you can't buy a kangaroo at your local pet store, where Tasmania is located, how Russians 
how Russian has three numbers when English only has two, singular and plural, how to sing the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon song. The sheet music is included in this book. Okay, and then how the book is organized and a note from Stan, those are the same. So, um, anyways, um, no, I'm sorry, the note from Stan is different. Fred spends some exciting and some ancient moments getting ready to begin teaching a new subject, English, in a new country, Australia. Almost every teacher experiences some of those feelings at the beginning of a new school year. By the time that Fred finished his first hour of teaching, which is at the end of this book, he was feeling good again. So here we go with the contents. You can pause the video if you want to see them more deeply. There we have it, okay? And I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on the layout because you should know how it's laid out. All right, here's the index. And so we've got everything from a comma splice to George Orwell's 1984 metric system, Rodin's The Thinker, Schwa, semicolon, past progressive tense, plurals, old sayings, vowels, understatements, verbs, intransitive, transitive, who versus that, why you never see kangaroos in pet stores, and words without vowels, among many other things. Then we get into classes. All right, so let's see what we've got in classes. So we've got the seven parts of speech, how you first learned what the word dog meant, more of the continuing story of Ducky Sings Opera, four common errors in using adjectives, four uses of italics, how to determine if a verb is irregular, easy ways to tell if the tense is progressive or perfect or both, which adjectives don't have a comparative or a superlative form, how the present tense can exist outside of time, Transitive verbs are direct and indirect objects, nominative, possessive, and objective cases, what a simile is, and the schwa and the word simile. And that's only up to page 39. Of course, how this book is organized. Another note from Stan. And the contents. So here we go. All right. And then get into chapter one and so forth. And then let's go to the index here we've got auxiliary ver verbs broad reference of a pronoun italics james joyce's uh, ulysses life it's two parts uh, elliptical construction exceptions in math facts of life uh, compound adjectives counter words conjunctions direct object uh, metric system slang simile uh, schwa mothering the three parts nurses a special note to them objective case stream of consciousness writing all kinds of verbs, quotations, proofreading, and more. And then the last book is Dreams. So let's jump into that. So here in this book you will learn when to use scarce quotes. No, when to use scare quotes. The use of brackets within quotations, when to use an M dash, the rule for hard G versus soft G for words ending in N-G-E-R, the use of sick in quotations and that's just the first eight pages of the story another note from stan all right and then we get to the contents okay 19 chapters still and then chapters are formatted the same way All right, and the index, everything from acronyms, active voice, correlative conjunctions, dash crazy, um, etymology, fake smiles, laconic, inverse, hyperbole, humor of five-year-olds, mood, nominative, metaphor, Mary Poppins, passive voice periods, touching dashes, pizza toppings, prepositions, professional degrees, pronouncing viz, i.e., and e.g., quote, question marks and close quotes, schwa, scare quotes, remnants, slash, small essays, worn out metaphors, thesaurus, trapezoid, typing, and m dash, and unnecessary prepositions, stitch in poetry, and the art of spelling, and more. So I hope that helps you get an idea of what these books are like. You can see the author, if you're not familiar with Life of Fred, the author has a unique personality and sense of humor, and Fred is a little five-year-old that teaches at a university and the whole story is based on him usually like one book can cover like one day um and it just tells these little stories of fred and his uh, students and it's really funny and really interesting but as you can see it ties in all kinds of 
crazy, weird things, and that really helps keep the interest of the kids. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I have not used these yet, so I can't give a review on them, but I thought it would be helpful to give you a look inside so you can see what it's all about. If you do have any questions that I might be able to answer, feel free to leave them down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you, and make sure to, to subscribe if you haven't already for lots and lots of homeschool videos, tons of homeschool curriculum flip throughs, and even more coming. So I have all kinds of curriculum on my channel, so make sure you check it out, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.